Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie. Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi. Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie. Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington. Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson. Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson. Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington. matter of criminal case number 48255, The People versus Rodney Harrington, another element has been added, unofficially. Allison McKenzie has been struck down by a hit-run car. She lies in critical condition in doctor's hospital. As a result, Leslie Harrington and the Harrington family attorney, Theodore Dowell, have been forced to reappraise their planned defense. I was shocked, Elliot. If there's anything I can do. No, nothing. Thank you. Dan? Norman, have you seen Rodney? Yeah. You haven't told him about Allison? No, I didn't know until after I left the cell. It uh, seemed to me that maybe later. Good. In due time. Uh, Norman and I are going to sample some press room coffee. We've got to watch each other, Ted. I agree. No mention of Allison at all. What I mean is we have to concentrate on it. Rodney will pick up the most casual reference, a pause, a look between us, anything. I'll do my best. We could argue. We could get emotional. In the heat of an argument, but I know my son. If we told him about Allison, he couldn't discuss legal matters, even at his own defense. This is the way to handle it. Leslie Harrington, Rodney Harrington's father. And this is... Oh, yes, Mr. Harrington. Right this way. Hello, Mr. Dow. Hello, Annie. How are you? Oh, I'm getting a little tired of trying to think of ways to answer that question. I guess I'm just getting tired of thinking. And you, you came with more questions? Just one. It's a... Let me put it to him, Ted. I don't think the trial should be held in Peyton Place. But it's your decision, Rodney. Well, Joe Chernock died here. Doesn't the trial have to be held here? Not necessarily. There's a legal procedure we call change of venue. It's a safeguard. If there's prejudice against a defendant, his lawyer can request. Now, check me if I'm wrong. The location of the trial can be changed. Are we going to ask for one? Your father thinks we should. Strongly. Boy. Well, I'd sure like to get out of this cell, even, even if it uh, just means moving to another one. What about bail? It was turned down. But we can appeal to a higher court. I'm against moving this trial, Rodney. Oh? Now, Rodney agrees with me. What more is there to discuss? Wait a second, Dad. Why are you against it, Mr. Dow? A change of venue is a negative factor, no matter where you are. But I'm more of a negative factor. Change of venue is like, like saying we don't trust the people in Peyton Place, isn't it? Right. What if it isn't granted? It'll be granted. If it isn't, we've gone on record as considering Peyton Place incapable of being fair. Exactly. But the people of Peyton Place aren't capable of being fair, Rodney. Now listen to me for a minute. I've talked with a number of people. Gus Chernock evidently holds me responsible for Joe's death. Some people think I was responsible for Elizabeth Carson's death. Everyone knows I was responsible for Elliot's years in prison. Now there's no need for you to be tried with that backlog of unpunished crimes in the family. People know the difference between you and me. How can you be sure? It's a gamble, Rod. Well, not one you need to take. It's one I want to take. 
You know, I didn't have to stay here before either, but I did. And I, uh, and I got a job at the mill, and, and after a while, people started treating me like Rodney Harrington, not like, like Leslie Harrington's boy. You've grown up, I know, Rodney, but that doesn't mean anything. Dad, I trust the people around here. If I ask for a change of venue, it's like, it's like throwing away the last six months. I might as well have gone to Europe with you. I wish you had. Oh, Dad, that's beside the point. Mr. Dow, I want to be tried and paid in place. And I don't want any special privileges. And I don't want you to appeal the bail ruling. Good. Why? Because I have to do what's right. What I think is right for myself. What's right isn't always what's best, Rod. Sometimes it's unthinking. Sometimes. Sometimes this town sends innocent men to prison. You're wasting your time. Let's go. Oh, sir. Think about it, Rodney. You don't have to make up your mind right now. There's nothing to think about. Perhaps not. He's got a good level head. I wonder if you're right not to mention Harrison. He'll come around. Just like we played at home. We're going to go into a room, and a man will ask you some questions. Darling, she'll be all right. We've been over it half a dozen times. Maybe Dr. Rossi won't be able to get away. He said he'd be here. He did sound a little strained on the phone. Don't you think you should ask Mr. Fowler not to mention Allison's accident? Kim is upset enough as it is. Yes. Hello. Hello, Doctor. Hello. Have I uh, kept you waiting? No, not at all. How's Allison? Is there any change? No, nothing yet. She's still in a coma. Well, shall we go in? Schuster, thank you for coming. Not at all. Uh, this is my wife, Doris. How do you do? My wife has mentioned me again. Yes, we met at the country club. And this is my daughter, Kim. She won't be able to understand you unless she can see your lips, Mr. Fowler. Hello, Kim. Dr. Rossi, Mr. Fowler? Mr. Fowler and I have met before. Yes, at the Mortons. Uh, as I explained on the phone, uh, Kim being a special child, I felt that her doctor ought to be here. Oh, I find that quite acceptable, Mr. Schuster. Well, why don't we all get comfortable? I think we can begin. Uh, Mr. Fowler, please be careful. She doesn't know what's happened to Allison McKenzie. She's very close to Allison. I see. Thank you. Now, Kim, would you like to tell me your name? That's so the lady over there can write it down. Um. And how old are you? Eight. And do you know your address? One hundred old Oast Road. That's very good. You're a very smart little lady. I told her before what you would probably be asking, Mr. Fowler. Well, good. That will help expedite things. Now, Kim, can you tell me what happened the night you went to the wharf? 
And does she react that way whenever the wharf is mentioned? Yes, she does. Kim. Uh, let's try another way. Perhaps we could reconstruct the evening. Mrs. Schuster, if you'd just start her off. Kim, remember we gave the dinner party that evening? And we hired Allison McKenzie to look after you. Is Allison your friend, Kim? And where did Allison take you the night your mother and father had their party? Uh, they went to the library. Please, Mrs. Schuster, I'd like the child to answer. Well, uh, she's hardly spoken at all since we moved to Peyton Place. As a matter of fact, it's only recently she began to talk at all. I can testify to that. She was brought to my office twice for treatment. Both times she didn't speak. Was she unable to speak, doctor, or unwilling? She was unwilling. Mr. Schuster, you said that Kim only recently began to talk. How recently? Well, it was the morning after Joe Chernak died, as a matter of fact. Allison came back to our house and asked to see Kim. Oh, why? She th thought Kim had seen something that upset her. She spoke to Allison about what had happened on the wharf. Mr. Fowler, please. I'm sorry, Mrs. Schuster. Uh, well, let's try again. Now, the night of the party, Allison took Kim to the library. But there seems to be a gap here. How did Kim get from the library to the... She ran away from Allison. I might as well tell you that she ran away once before, shortly after we moved here. I can verify that also. Kim. Why did you run away from your friend, Allison? Norman. Norman? Norman Harrington. Oh, Rodney's brother, I see. Go on. Well, Norman met Allison and Kim at the library. And it seems that while they were talking, Kim had a misunderstanding with the librarian, and she ran away. I want... Allison. Oh, she's not here, baby. I want to go home. Soon, soon, sweetheart. Oh, Mrs. Schuster, may I? Mr. Fowler, I think she's had enough. I've got to find out what she saw at well, the wharf. Well, can't war. you see what you're doing, Jerry? Just a few more moments, and then you can go. Now, Kim, you know Rodney Harrington, don't you? Did you see Rodney Harrington the night you went to the wharf. Was there anyone with him? Uh, um, Tell me what you saw. They were eating. And then? Rodney made the man fall. How did Rodney make the man fall? He threw something. Is that what she told Allison? Yes. Are you through? Now we can go home. Goodbye, Mr. Fowler. We'll be in touch. We can sign this later.